there's trouble brewing in Arizona. Donald Trump is feuding with his own party. At odds over trade, health care, law and order, and over the president's abrasive style. And then there's the wall. We are building a wall on the southern border, which is absolutely necessary. Believe me, we have to close down our government. We're building that wall. That would be an awful decision that would backfire badly, not just on the president, but all of the Republicans who are in office. Donald Trump said Mexico would pay for the wall, but that's not happening. So now the president needs tens of billions of dollars from Congress, and he's likely to face opposition not just from Democrats, but from Republicans as well. The battle's being fought within the Republican Party, much like the tensions inside the Trump White House, can be seen as a fight between the globalists and the nationalists. And the wall has become a symbol of that. It's become the totemic issue at the heart of this battle. Arizona, like America, is divided on the issue of the wall. But those who want it built see opposition to it as part of a wider pattern of obstruction of Donald Trump's America First agenda. The, the wall represents a symbol of trespass. It's a symbol of don't come across here. We stand for who we are as Americans. And by not having anything there, it's open transition. It's very frustrating for me. If I behaved like they're doing in Washington, D.C., I wouldn't be the sheriff long. So what's the difference? I mean, people have hope with this president. Donald Trump won Arizona in 2016, but by a far smaller margin than the Republican candidate in 2012. America has not made its peace with the fact of his presidency, and that includes much of the Republican establishment. Arizona's two Republican senators, John McCain and Jeff Flake, have been some of the most outspoken critics of the president. Now, as we know, Donald Trump doesn't take criticism well, and he's hitting back. He's looking for candidates to challenge Jeff Flake, a senator from his own party, when his seat is up for re-election in the midterms next year. During a recent visit to Phoenix, the president met with Robert Graham to sound him out as a possible challenger. He's a former chair of the state Republican Party and ran the president's campaign in Arizona. Trump, he says, was elected to shake things up, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's a disruptor. So disruptors generally get effective, positive change if they can endure through the change. And so right now, the, the politics as usual people, when he talks about draining a swamp, he's disrupting your universe. He's not concerned with the optics of politics or what he says. He's concerned with the outcome. It's been a chaotic summer in the White House. Five senior staffers have resigned or been forced out in as many weeks. You could think it's chaos in there, but I can tell you it's organized and intentional what they're doing because what he is doing is he's behaving like a CEO. But when I see people like Reince Priebus go out, that doesn't make me think he's pushing an ally that was, uh, you know, America first ally. I think that was somebody that really didn't have his best um, in game in mind when he was in the White House and even before the White House, given discussions that I had with previous beforehand. In the nationalists versus globalists narrative, one of the biggest rifts is over trade. Donald Trump leans towards economic nationalism. He wants tariffs on China. He said he'll probably pull the US out of the North America Free Trade Agreement. Classical Republicans, including Arizona Senator Jeff Flake, are appalled. I don't believe there's any more articulate champion of free trade and conservative values than Senator Flake. It's a very odd political strategy to me that, that it seems that he's doing everything possible to settle scores within his own party than expanding 
the, the playing field in terms of available seats. The president would most likely find it a lot easier to pass his agenda, whether it's health care or any other issue, if he had some more votes to spare in the United States Senate. Donald Trump promised his voters he would make America great again. The implicit reference to a bygone era has sparked a battle for the soul of this country. It's a battle that's also being played out in the White House among staffers in the nationalist and globalist camps. The Republican establishment is pinning its hopes on the latter to try to wrest back some control of the administration. I think there's a battle going on in the White House in terms of control over how the president moves forward. I would like to see that the, the good people in the administration stay. I do believe the country is better served with them being in, in key positions and continuing to, to fight to, to try to turn the ship around. The drive from the Mexican border towards the state capital, Phoenix, takes you through the town of Tombstone. The gunfights of the old Wild West were a mixture of the personal and the political. Hard-bitten local ranchers versus northern newcomers looking to impose law and order. We got talking to Mike Caruffa, owner of the Doc Holiday Saloon. Tombstone today is a theme park shadow of its once edgy self, but still, Old habits die hard. Hey, take care of business, Mike. A snarky remark from a neighbor sparks off some long simmering feud. Yeah. Can I have a minute? Yeah. Be a man and stand up to what you I want have to say. Free you know, speech. Quit your mouth. You know about that? You're a big drunk fan, free speech. He was the one that walked by, take care out. of business. He just keeps running his mouth, and I'm tired of listening Johnny, to him. I didn't cuss her out. Is this is, is either about politics or is it? No, it's about what's going on in the bar. Okay. All right. All right. And we are building a wall on the southern border, which is absolutely necessary. It turns out Mike was at the rally in Phoenix last month, standing directly behind the president. Mike can tell us something very important about Donald Trump, something his detractors often fail to understand. With his base, his popularity is pretty much unshakable, no matter what he does. It's like you're talking to your buddy. It's like you're talking to somebody you know. It's not like, you know, it's not like talking to a politician. I'm from an Italian family. And he turned around a couple times and he like puts his hands out and he goes, he goes, what am I gonna do? I mean, what do I gotta say? You know what I mean? Like, hey, what do I gotta say, right? And it just reminded me of, of being at home with my uncles and stuff. And uh, I agree with pretty much everything he said. In fact, I agree with everything he said. And so the battle for the Republican Party continues. In the cities, the Metropolitans are chipping away at the jagged edges of this presidency. Trump calls that the swamp. Out here in the desert, they like their politics a little rougher. <laughs>